Trailbreaker! Help! Hey guys. Hello, gorgeous. It's time for another Transformers third-party masterpiece review. This time we're taking a look at one that I picked up a few toy shows ago. It's Mastermind Creations Ocular Max Terrageous, aka Trailbreaker. It comes in the standard Ocular Max box, which has a real diaclone feel to it. Takara's line of Transformers before they were known as Transformers. There's a small window where you can see Trailbreaker in his vehicle mode, along with some G1 cartoon inspired artwork on the front, a close up of Trailbreaker's head on the side, and some G1 style tech specs on the back, along with pictures showing him transforming from truck to robot. The bio reads, Terageous is known to be the life of the party and is often seen cracking jokes and buying rounds of drinks for fellow Steelians, I guess that's their name for Autobots, at any given bar. He is always ready to lighten the mood and knows how to make others forget their worries and have a good time. Unfortunately, all this joking around is often a cover-up for his own low self-esteem and his longing to be accepted by others. But when the time comes to answer the bell on the battlefield, Terageous' bravery and impenetrable force field ability has been an asset and has saved many Steelian lives. So not exactly the same character bio as Trailbreaker from the original cartoon. To compare with the original tech specs from the 1984 Trailbreaker, that bio began with a Trailbreaker quote, an Autobot's as good as the fuel in his tank. Trailbreaker makes light of any situation, no matter how serious. Practical joker and cheerleader, but considers himself a liability to Autobots since he consumes the most fuel. Lacks self-esteem and often asks to be left behind. Projects nearly impenetrable invisible force field. Can jam radio transmissions. Very slow. Often mopes about his handicaps, but his bravery and defensive prowess is unquestioned. So again, some aspects were left out in the cartoon or tweaked. Trailbreaker's trademark force field was not invisible on the show. <laughs> There's nothing like a force field to take the sting out of laser fire! And he wasn't much of a joker. His character was pretty straightforward. He was very similar to Ironhide, one of the older, gruffer, tougher Autobots. What he lacked in speed and sleekness, he more than made up for in experience. Trailbreaker? I believe you know what to do. This plays your prime! And he wasn't just used as another grunt like Gears or Brawn. He seemed to be one of Optimus Prime's main advisors, often seen standing right beside him, much like Ironhide. Ocular Max do a really nice job on the box. I'd prefer something a little more G1 looking myself, but this might be as far as they can push the envelope, considering this is an unlicensed third-party item. Here's a comparison with an Encore G1 Trailbreaker box. Without the Encore flap, they're about the same height, but the Ocular Max box is a little thicker. I do like the finish on the Ocular Max box though. I love the glossiness on the Encore boxes, but the matte finish on the Ocular Max box is really nice too. Alright, time for the part where you get to vicariously open this bad boy. Just get my trusty X-Acto knife ready here. And... What the... Hey! This is going to be a very short review if you don't knock that off. Oh, hexagonal nuts! Sorry! Thank you. Jeez. Freaking force field already. I'm really feeling better! Like I just stepped off the assembly line! He's packed securely in the box held in a plastic tray, and I love this, in a baggie as well. I love it when these third-party companies go the extra mile to ensure that the item doesn't get damaged during shipping. And damage includes paint and plastic getting scuffed up in the box. Looks like he's got an uneven wheel, but don't panic just yet. Also in the box is another baggie with instructions, a trading card, and some extra accessories. So if yours has an uneven wheel like mine, it's a simple fix. Just pull the wheel down until it clicks in place. And he's ready to roll. Alright, let's look at the accessories first. He's got quite a few of them. In classic G1 style, he has a tech spec decoder. 
so that you can see his readouts on his file card. Or you can hold it in front of your eyes and give yourself Terminator vision. This decoder, by the way, feels a little thicker than the original G1 decoders. You also get a trading card with a picture of Trailbreaker on the front, and pictures of the actual toy in robot and truck mode on the back, along with his bio. You get two of these arm attachments. This is what you have to attach to the forearm in order to attach Trailbreaker's gun hand. And you get two of these gun hands or shoulder rocket launchers. There's Trailbreaker's force field generator. Use your force field! A pair of these clips which let you clip extra parts onto Trailbreaker. And here's a really cool little extra. It's a G1 toy accurate Mirage head for Ocular Max's Sphinx, their third-party masterpiece Mirage. I'm not going to swap the head on my Mirage because I'm happy with how he looks, but here's the G1 Toy Accurate head on it. The blue on the plastic is a little darker than the second release of Sphinx, but it should match up with the initial release of Sphinx better, since that one was a darker blue. Alright, that's enough of Mirage. Time for you to disappear. You also get two attachments to hold the force field generator in place and you can decide whether you want it right behind his head or on his shoulder like on the cartoon. And another alternate head, this time a G1 toy accurate Trailbreaker head. It's really cool of Ocular Max to include all of these options. And you also get some very clear and concise instructions. They're very easy to follow and I like how they highlighted the parts that are supposed to move in red. If you do find yourself getting stuck during the transformation though, there are a lot of great tutorials on YouTube on how to transform them. Here's Terageous in his vehicle mode, which is a Toyota Helix 4x4 camper. I may not be fast, but I'm tough! He comes with side view mirrors already installed, but they do give you a pair of extras just in case those get broken or lost. Another awesome bonus from Ocular Max. Thanks guys. He retains the same deco as the G1 Trailbreaker. He's black with the same yellow, orange, red stripes on the sides. In pictures, I thought I was really going to dislike the blue headlights, but in person, I actually like them. The chrome on the grille is really nice, as well as some nice chrome on the hubcaps as well. And here's the part that I don't like. He's got this gap in the back, which doesn't look very good. Mine rolls forward perfectly, but seems to stop very quickly when I roll him backwards. Got lead in your drive shaft? I don't see you breaking the sound barrier, Ironhide! And here's a look at his undercarriage. It's actually very nice and tidy, not that you'd be looking at it very much. Another gripe about the vehicle mode is that the camper part of it isn't the same black as the rest of the truck. It looks more like a dark gray. It really should have been the same color as the rest of the truck. I think I'm also getting spoiled by Takara masterpiece offerings like Ironhide that are completely painted and have a nice glossy look to them. This guy's all plastic and just doesn't look as fancy. I do like the tinted blue windows though, just like the G1 version had. And another great throwback to G1, the tires are Formula Desert Dog. And they feel rubber, not hard plastic. Save your tires, guys! And I got another gripe. Not just about this guy, but most Masterpiece Transformers in general, both Takara and third party. He doesn't have room for a driver. While the G1 Transformers didn't have that much room inside, most of the Autobot cars did have a little space for a Diaclone driver. Part of the whole fun of a vehicle mode for me is being able to put a driver inside. That's what I really loved about the Vinyl Tech and Alternators lines. The vehicle modes weren't just accurate on the outside, they were accurate on the inside as well. Complete with seat detailing, dashboards, shifters, and working doors. It's really unfortunate that most of these Masterpiece Transformers can't be displayed with a driver inside like Spike or Spark Plug or Chip. Also, if you're using Spike from Masterpiece Optimus Prime, the scale is a little off too. It's pretty difficult to get the scale of both the robot and the vehicle right. Usually if they get the scale of the robot right, the vehicle mode has to suffer by being too small or too big. And that's the case here as well. Alright, time for before and after. Here's Terageous with the original G1 Trailbreaker. Hey! Wait up for me! Terageous is a lot more filled out. He's not as stubby as the G1 truck. The back camper part is different as well. The roof is angled on the G1 Trailbreaker but it's flat on Terageous. And here's that driver compartment I talked about. I'll pop an Impossible Toys spike inside. This spike is actually a little taller than a Diaclone driver, so the roof won't close completely, but you get the idea. Look, Dad, no hands. <laughs> Big deal, I'm driving. 
It's a little touch, but it looks so much better to me having a driver inside, even if it is a center seat. The front of the G1 Trailbreaker is painted black and you can see how much nicer it is. It's got that beautiful glossy sheen to it that regular plastic doesn't have. And if you like your Transformers vehicles to have that armed mask look, you can attach his lasers to his roof. There isn't much range in them once you get them in there though. They can slightly point up or down. He might not be able to catch you, but he can still blast you to bits in vehicle mode. Man, that's hot! Okay, that's enough for truck mode. Time to transform him. Piece of chrome alloy cake, huh? Now this is my favorite part, the robot mode. I really like how he turned out. He perfectly captures Trailbreaker's look from the cartoon. The chrome is great as well. So shiny and gleaming. As I mentioned before, he comes with two head sculpts, a G1 toy accurate head, and one inspired by the cartoon. My preference is the cartoon look. Looks fantastic. His thumb and all of his fingers have articulation, but not at every knuckle. In fact, only his index finger has knuckle articulation, and it can't straighten all the way out either. It's in a permanent trigger hook, so he can't really point at anything. I'm sure there will be, or already are, Upgrade kits for people who like every finger and knuckle to have articulation though. Here's a look at his legs. Everything folds up quite nicely in the transformation, giving him powerful looking legs. His ankles have that pivot that I love, although one of his feet is very loose here. Easily fixed with some nail polish or crazy glue though. This pivot allows his feet to sit flat no matter what pose he's in. He's got double jointed knees, so he has quite a bit of range here too. His hips are very interesting. So normally this gray part of the leg would be the part that goes forward and back, but what they've done here is make the whole hip swivel forward and back, which gives you a lot more range. And he also has a swivel in that part where the gray leg connects to the black hip, which allows for dynamic lunging and running poses. He's got a lot of range forward, back, and out to the side. Seems like a lot of these recent Transformers are able to do the splits for some reason. I guess Cybertronians are getting into yoga as well. One tiny problem I've noticed though is that this connector in the shin keeps popping open whenever I try to pose the legs. It's easily closed back up though. And he's got another unique joint in his shoulders as well. He's got great range up and down left and right, and for added range they've included this slide effect. The entire arm can slide forward or backward on the shoulder joint. Ocular Max is also doing a third party hoist called Artifacts. And since hoist was a remold of Trailbreaker, Ocular Max is remolding Tourageous for their hoist, so they've incorporated a few touches in this mold for hoist. The chest has these two joints which go in for robot mode, but for hoist you can just leave them out to give them that wider look, and push them in to give Trailbreaker that leaner look. And here's Trailbreaker in a pretty dynamic pose. He can be a little wobbly, but he stays up. And since I usually don't look at the backs of my Transformers, the dark grey cab on the back won't really bother me that much. There are several different options for how you want to display the weapons on your trail breaker. Here's a look at his shoulder cannon which plugs in. It doesn't have all that much range, but I don't think it really needs it. I'm going to pretty much just keep it in this position. And here's a look at the handgun attachment. There's the hand hidden inside the forearm, and this black piece attaches over top nice and snugly. And in order to attach this cannon, you'll have to take off this end plug piece. And that just plugs in right there. Fire fight, anyone? Nice detailing on the force field generator as well. Although the robot mode looks like he leapt out of the cartoon, I like how the weapons look very similar to the G1 Transformers weapons. It's a perfect blend for me. As I mentioned earlier, the force field generator comes with two different stems. This one plugs in behind the head to give you the G1 toy look. Or if you want the cartoon look, this one plugs into his shoulder, and it's on a ball joint, so even the force field generator has a little bit of articulation. And these two little clips that I showed you earlier can either plug into the holes in his shoulders or onto his back, and can be used to hold these extra pieces if you don't want to lose them. And here's another before and after, Tourageous with G1 Trailbreaker, or more accurately, the G1 Encore Trailbreaker with Blue Visor. Tourageous isn't as stocky as the G1 Trailbreaker, and I like how the legs are more filled out. They always seem too thin on the G1 toy compared to the bulk of his upper body. And for a couple comparisons, here he is with his old buddy Ironhide. He scales perfectly. Same height, same speed. 
You're still losing the race! Very cool finally having these two old war horses to display together. Thanks for the force field, Trailbreaker. Now it's our turn. And here he is with Optimus Prime. Once again, the scale looks perfect to me. He's just a little shorter than Prime. You did well, Trailbreaker. And here's a group shot I've been waiting ages for. It's the Autobot rescue team sent to Cybertron by Optimus Prime to rescue Sparkplug in the Ultimate Doom miniseries. Can anyone join the party or do we need an invitation? Again, these guys all scale together perfectly. Trailbreaker is quite a bit taller than Wheeljack, Brawn, and Bumblebee. I'm right behind you! While still being dwarfed by Skyfire. And his coolest gimmick by far is Force Field! Four AA batteries required. Nothing gets through this thing. And it comes in handy around the house, too. Afraid that your toy collection will get dusty? What you need is a force field! Now you don't have to worry about it thanks to a force field! Way to go, Trailbreaker! <laughs> and it's not just good for protection against matter, either. A force field can also protect you against noxious gases. Oh, Roly, have you been eating cheese again? Let's try a little force field to interrupt his override waves. <sighs> I heard of a hot foot, but that's the first hot nose I ever saw. I've had this custom vinyl tech trail breaker as a placeholder for years on my masterpiece shelf. And I'm very happy that he's getting replaced with a proper G1 looking trailbreaker. Another fantastic third party masterpiece offering from Ocular Max. Remember to share the video if you liked it, leave a comment below, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Nerd must stay! What you need is a force field!